Greetings, ladies and gentle players. It is another wonderful Friday of this January of 2022, making it a wonderful day for basics. And I am here and will soon be joined uh, once again by Celeste, who, as you can tell by the fact that I've got a challenge already up, uh, will not be playing me, but will be joining me while I play someone between 6Q and 3Q. Not really sure who I'm going to get yet. And I'm going to talk to them while I play to make sure they are grasping the concepts that we have been going over, but in a less stressful manner. Make sure that they're still uh, kind of thinking about the same things I am while I'm go ahead and play the things. And then next week we will return uh, to having them play while I poke and prod their brain while they're making decisions actively in real time. And speaking of making decisions in real time, have you ever made decisions in real life? Have you ever wanted to play people in real life? Well, over at Baduk.club, they've got themselves a lovely little map filled with a whole bunch of dots. Unfortunately, not in Mongolia right now, perhaps in the future. Uh, but yeah, a whole bunch of dots here where you can find people and clubs to play with in person. Because don't we all like playing some in-person Go? Yes, we do. Well, Baduk.club, you can do that as well as find yourself. Lovely little store here for some lovely little equipment. If that's what your lovely little heart desires. Baduk.club, if you haven't been there yet, you should go. What are you waiting for? Oh, got a game. Here is the game. I will link it to you. There you go. Um, actually, I'm going to do better than that. Ignore that completely. What I'm going to do instead, I'm going to share my screen so you can see exactly what's on my screen. Sure. All right, double screen share. Cool. Okay, so right now I'm leaning towards just a double four four point the opening in my opinion doesn't matter particularly much and this lets them do whatever now they're approaching on the inside uh, I could pincer if I really so feel inclined pincering is completely fine to do but it gives me influence and like uh, the impression that I'm building left hand side which I don't know if I want to do right now so right now, my current thought is obviously I want to maybe approach on the inside or the outside or pincer him. I don't really care what I'm doing right now, but these are the current points of interest. Your basic, your basic opening stuff. Just go, you know, corner, side, center. Question is, what is he going to do? I anticipate because we're on KG. Uh, oh, not KGS. OGS, sorry. I was going to say he's going to attach, but no. All right. Yeah, normally you see the attached. Maybe older player then, so he's playing older Seki. Uh, now here we can ignore or or respond. Uh, again, basics. I usually just go ahead and respond, but you don't have to. You could approach because it's technically faster. If they take your three three, you can ignore that, or you get a two space anyway. Doesn't really matter. But just for simplicity, I I usually respond. Now he needs a base. Or what's going to happen is I'm going to pincer him, most likely. All right, so he took that. I have a new point of interest because he played this. You know what it is? Um, the uh, uh, approach on the left side. Now maybe have a large knight's enclosure to make that feel crunched. Uh, why approach on left side? This is what you're referring to. What, what, uh... No, no, I'm looking at, like, C8. Oh, okay, no. Um, so, approaching the 4-4 four four on the outside could be interesting, because I now have potential to keep the low stones low, so I might be able to, like, approach back off, keep low, and then just kind of, like, build this area out. So I'm reacting to the fact that he's got low stones here. I can keep low stones low. So rather than approach on the inside, maybe, 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 I'll go ahead and approach on the outside instead. 
uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but uh, wouldn't it be better to um, contest the left-hand side of the board, though? Um, I know he's got I, a living group there. I but... can contest that. Uh... If I really want, if there were things that I could do still against this base, unfortunately, I don't think there really is. And if I approach him worse, I think he can ignore me. If this was just a two space, sure, but this is pretty settled. And I don't want to contest this and push it up because right now I'm contemplating I can keep it low to grow the top. And I will apologize to those viewing on YouTube. For whatever reason, I accidentally maximized OGS, and then when I minimize it, the stupid friggin' nameplates change their position. I don't know how that happens, but it happens. Weird that he's hesitating here. I mean, I did give him 15 minutes, so he has time to think. But this isn't really uh, a move that you need to think about, right? Pretty straightforward. Yeah, I mean, the really only choice is lower or high, yeah. Mm -hmm. What if he approaches me instead? Plays away. What do you mean? Like take a like? Oh, plays away. You should attach Q uh, Q fifteen immediately. Uh, that's my move. Yes, for those who do all the AI variations. Yes, I know. AI prefers the approach and not the attach, but I'm still old school. And I like it. So, oh well. Now I could play. The star point, star point has an easy invasion of the M18 point. So I'm just going to go into a two space. So he doesn't have that easy invasion point. And we're going to play this one instead, especially because there's not a lot of room up here, even if he invades. And in fact, if he invades, you can kind of picture this white stone already on the board because it's forcing. And then we can cap this, which is a really tough position to get out of. He's approaching me. I could ignore him. No reason to. I'll answer. Unless there's something really, really, really vital that I wanted to do on the board, uh, then I would play away. But since there's no, like, thing for me to Atari or cut or attack right now, uh, no reason to just ignore the approach. No? Okay. He's staying old school through and through. Once again, you have the same options. Uh, I could get in the approach, for example, and ignore the 3-3, three, three, but meh, it's fine. He doesn't back off here. We just go ahead and pincer it. Still fine. All right, that's pretty safe. New point of interest on the left-hand side, because we're always looking at where our forcing moves are in the future, because that helps us uh, plan out our moves a little bit. So new point of interest is actually right here. Hello. Larger, thank you because it threatens to go down, right? And split them apart. So new point of interest. Now I could do the expansion. That is a side into center thing and there is still a corner to approach. Um, I've already got two corners. And I might have a third because he played high here. The invasion point there is really, really easy. Let's go ahead and take uh, these expansionary moves instead. I might get Sente from this, but it's not assured. Because any moves he plays here next, I'm going to ignore after my forcings are done. Like right now, I can ignore this. But basics, maybe I'll protect my cutting points. Because if he Atari's, I could always Atari it back. It's not really a problem. Fiatari is here, I can extend. Not really a problem. Fiatari is here, I can connect and Hane. Not really a problem. But all right, I'll, I'll, I'll defend, I'll defend. For shape, for shape, for shape. Would the uh, extension have been viable there? Uh, extend to where? Uh, F13 from the, from the cut stone. Um, F13 would be a little bit odd. It's keeping both top and bottom cut points available. Um, yeah, I'd rather just go ahead and connect it. Get rid of a, get rid of a, uh, 
a weak point would be a little bit stronger. Only way I wouldn't do that is if instead of a move like F13, I wanted to play a move like, ooh, I don't know, maybe a one or a two space jump or something to try to play faster. Then you might be onto something. But other than that, I would just go ahead and defend the cutting uh, shape point. Plus, now that I have, I have strong shape here, this is only one weakness that I'm leaving behind when I'm probing to split him, rather than having a weakness, weakness, uh, cut off. So about the right-hand side, if I wanted to reduce it, where would I start? Um, split, star point, or R10. Uh, let's see, R10, interesting. Uh, or there's star also point. an approach. There's also a, a knight's approach at, what is that, R12. Yeah. This one is one that I'm inclined to do because of the high approach here, or the high back off here. Otherwise, I would be contemplating doing this one instead, the off start point, because I can get a two space no matter how he responds at that point, mm -hmm. which is what I'd be looking for. Or I would want to play a move like this one, because that's just an easy, uh, easy base. So for now, I will go and approach. Because I have to go under, out, over. Very, very, very safe. A little bit more aggressive than the split. Hmm, really passive. Also, bye bye, 3-3. Three, three. Hmm. And you can see oh, as I'm looking this... at these... Sorry, what? Uh, I was just going to say, in this scenario, I'd be looking at the, the S5 point. And then you can envision in a couple of moves all of the white stones working together. Truthfully, I am as well. I'm contemplating just playing this for simplicity's sake, for the sake of uh, good old uh, B6. It does let him get a large knight. But a large knight is still has an invasion point behind, so it could be educational for some. Uh, but yeah, playing here, having him drop down, extend up, he connects, and then we back off either two or three is still perfect. Tell you what, I'll do that one since that was your idea. He could pincer, but weird move. He could do this one too, a little bit older style, but that's playable. Uh, running out of points of interest now, so let's go ahead and say this is now one, because it gives a little bit more potential invasion points here, and it just gives me a nice little extend. Um, You're not a bit too close. Nope, I either do one of two things if I'm going to extend. I'm either going to extend safely for a two space, or I usually go as far as I can, because it'll give me extra Aji in uh, whatever set I'm approaching. So either pick uh, either a bold expansion or a tight e expansion, and please don't be disconnected right now. Oh, there is a chance. He's returned! Okay, the show continues. I will ex wait. That's sus. All right, whatever. He disconnected a three Q joint and then he drew joints. It kind of sounds like I'm being paranoid. I'm being paranoid. I'm about to say it kind of sounds like a 3Q taken over for the 6Q. Um, it's, it's unranked, right? Mm-hmm. All right, so once again, we have low stones. So I can have... If I need them, I can keep them low. This is okay, but it's really, really small. Not really on my radar right now. Um, I still like expanding. I still like threatening. This one's not Sente. But this one potentially is, so I will play that one first, Sente first. 
And then I will, okay. Now here's where we kind of get into a game of chicken because he probably wants me to respond to him now, which is okay. But if I lose Sente while I'm responding to him and he goes back and defends, then he did all this crap in Sente. So I vote no to that. I'll follow up. There's one right answer here. Will he find it? Not just a stand up, right? Ooh, it is in fact the clamp. If he clamps, I drop down. He should be okay. I never would have found the clamp. Hmm, because yeah, the stand up here, I'll just connect. And then this is under attack, because I can go underneath it. So yeah, clampy clamp is super big. Puts him from the fourth line down to the third and the second a little bit. Gives me a few more force moves. Going to play a couple more stones here. Uh, might get a force move on the outside with the attachment because I'm now a nice uh, strong shape. And then we'll go back and answer this. Now, he's got to be careful with this uh, stone here. Do you know why? It looks like it is behind the sector line, especially if you get to fix in Sente on the left side. Yeah, the problem there is that it can easily... Ouch, that hurts. And it's actually game-endingly bad. If I actually follow this underneath, this is under attack. It has to run I follow. The sector line is definitely redrawn in my favor. And then he'll lose one or the other. Uh, I don't really want the, uh, the game to end that way, though. But what he has to be careful of here is you are absolutely right in that there might be some sector line problems here that we go and attack. But let's see if he is alert to that. If I move for my last uh, point of interest here to heavily redraw my sector line. And I played this large knight instead to get a little bit closer to a stone to let him know I'm kind of harassing it. Let's see if he goes in and lets me fully surround him or if he's actually going to defend himself. He does defend himself. All right. I will give him a nice little nod with a little poke. And then I will defend my territory. Your move, good sir. Now that he is heavy, I was about to say now that he's heavy, he needs to make sure that he's got a way to run away. But we have Sente now. What should we be doing now? Hard to find a move at this stage of the game. Um, I would... I would honestly jump out into the center of the board. Uh, like, from where? Somewhere around J10. Okay, is, what would be our goal from such a play? Or where's the profit from uh, playing a move like J10? Um... It cuts off one of the directions the, the Tetra shape can go. Well, we're trying to attack the Tetra shape. I think it's attackable, and that's a lot of territory for white. I agree. The only problem is there's always a chance that he's going to be able to live. So in terms of profit, I see that I've got like a Gote move here to connect the sides up. So if I attack from this side... There's a non-zero chance that there's some territory that I can get in here. Because I'm already kind of set up for it. So rather than pincer this way and drive him into my area, I'm just going to go ahead and pick a... Well, that actually technically works. There's a weak point, but if I get to connect back, then yeah, Tetris will die. But uh, let's just play, I don't know, something like... I really want to play that one now, actually. That's it's really interesting. It's totally the opposite way I, I had thought about these kind of attacks. 
Because in in the way I always thought was uh, the L shape is closest to the left hand side, so mm -hmm. the easiest path of retreat for the L for the Tetra shape is left or down. Mm -hmm. So if you want to kill the L shape, mm -hmm. you should play from the left or from the bottom and push it into your strength. And that would be absolutely correct if I didn't have any other way to profit while I'm attacking it. If there's points to be had, then I will attack it from the side where I can get more points. That way I have a backup plan in case it lives. If for whatever reason he already had like a group here or something, I mean, it would change the whole game actually. But yeah, then I would want to prevent him from going that way uh, to try to kill him. Sure, sure, sure. But here, the right's open. I'm on the eighth line. I can connect it up. It's worth a few points. And if you follow, if he doesn't defend, obviously, we'll probably play like a move like good old uh, Tengen, because if he attaches to that, we can Hane, and then follow, and he's completely surrounded. Uh huh. Now, I don't really want to push my luck or anything, but if I play here, that's still pretty huge. I, I mean, I might as well just follow it up. What, I would prefer your... that we're closer and I, I didn't, I wasn't afraid of this little point that I could be a bit more severe, but this should be okay. What are you asking? Uh, what is your answer to P6 or P6. Q5? P6 or, or Q5? Q6. Um, so right now I would ignore those because I'm threatening to surround his group right now. So if he's ignoring one of my stones, I will follow up and surround him. So right now my follow up is to ignore him completely. Because he's almost completely surrounded. If he ignore, If he plays over here, and I ignore him and like full on cap his group now, and he follows up to like kill two stones. I'll follow up and make sure that he's completely surrounded here, and then he has to live with whatever this is. And since this stone's not dead, and he's got, yeah, kind of an ouch. Um, I kind of really want to play this. It's forcing. I'll play it. Now, I can't connect this to anything, and I'm not even going to bother trying. All I'm going to do here is literally just extend. Because I can Hane, and then connect. Ooh, careful. I will push through this. Because turn, and then... Picking up some points. I'm not really worried about this side right now, because if he jumps, I will cut that. And if he diagonals, I'll just go ahead and play there, too. So, all right, got some extra moves here. Um, I could finish that off. It's pretty big. Eh. Yeah, why not? That seems good. Um, small. Cut the threat at worst. He needs to play down here. Mm, close. It should have been down in here. Um... So right now, we want to prevent him from getting, essentially, this little area here. How do we prevent him from getting that happy little area? Uh, I could just put a white stone in the middle of it. It can go <laughs> up or down. There's white, there's white stones on both sides. I mean... I mean, yeah, technically, you're not wrong about that, actually. I'm going to play a forcing move first, because I'm always about the forcing moves first. Because this is not a scam. I will happily cut through here and divide this from all of its friends. So I'm going to play that first. More stones I have to work with before we can try to counterattack and solidify this area. The happier I am. And the uh, less chance he has of doing something really, really uh, severe against me in counterattack. Because, I mean, this is a large knight. It can, it's always a chance to die, which would be on Forge. 
It's just a forcing move, sir. It's just a forcing move. Uh, and I can't, like, give him time like I could on KGS. Oh, he played. Okay, cool. Um... Yeah, so here, I'm fully connected to here. This guy is passive. I think he might know who I am. Like, honestly, every week I would create a new account here. If I could, just so people... Don't play passively against me since they know, like, uh-oh, he's really a 7-Don. Giving him Sente back, see what he does with it. We're kind of entering into endgame. So I'm seeing right now if he tries to look at uh, forcing moves. It's like for uh, white, or sorry, for black right now. Huge set of forcing moves. Huge forcing moves. Forcing, forcing. Um, yep, this is forcing too. Uh, do, 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 any others? If I was black, where else would I want to play? I mean, I would, it's annoying. I black, but... I'd be looking at a M10. Directly cut the, the knight. So it came up. That's when I do not think would go anywhere. What if you pushed first? From the bottom. Uh, we just block. And then we have uh, two stones into one point jump. This is actually pretty strong, all things considered. Because it's a pretty small area. Don't lose on time, please. Uh, Samoj. Alright. I think it's fine, though. Uh, unfortunately, he the game is pretty much over. There's just too many moves he needs to play. Uh, regretfully. Review started. Because things he needs to play. Um, so after this, he can play here. Hello. He could play here. Really good endgame moves to get in. Uh, he can play here. Arguably, maybe not Sente. Because technically, this is the biggest thing on the board right now. But let's just assume that it wasn't. And then he got to play here. Um, do I have any large moves? Not really. What about the, the, the Hane over the top? Or the Atari from the top instead of from the bottom? Uh, Atari from... Oh. Um... Yeah, sure you can do that too. Uh -huh. So let's see. By backing off that much, what's this guesstimator say? Gastamaya says it's a bit of a close game, because we didn't call out this. And if he gets all the forcing moves, then he's got a chance to make it a pretty close. Obviously. Obviously, obviously, obviously. Could play things like this at any moment, and that gets rid of like 15 extra points. Um, this is not technically Sente, because the damage has already been done. So... This is larger, because if he Hanes, I don't care, I'm still alive. But this turns into really big endgame. Right? Like, that's a much smaller uh, corner now. So, yeah, this was unfortunately the wrong first play. Things like this are much larger, because obviously if I play here, I mean, you're just gonna come on in. So yeah, this, sadly, not a big end game play. Because yeah, here we would now go in to do this. We'd go in and do things like this. I would probably do something like this. And then, even if he plays here, estimate now, it went from being a 5-point game to a 21-point game. And that is because of one slow endgame point right there. Understanding why this is slow is so huge. Because it changes, it just changes so much. Um... And then... 
since I didn't mention it, uh, to your credit, noticing that this could be considered behind enemy lines is actually true. If you wanted to attack it, you could shoulder hit this uh, to see how aggressive of a variation that we could actually get away with playing here. Because since we have a lot of friends in the area, it's actually kind of tough for him to really push any which way. So it's possible we could do something about that and uh, try to hold him and kill him. That is absolutely true. In actual game, if he played something like this, this Sonic group is suddenly not alive. It runs, we'll, I don't know, probably half-heartedly follow it while it's running. And at that point, there's just nowhere for it to go anymore. It just runs into our extra stone. And that would probably wind up for a nice clean kill. Which is why I said that that one was really, really unfortunate for him to miss. And the clamp, so much larger. Because, I mean, that's just not going to go anywhere. So all I could really... Hello? All I could really do is this one. Into, like, this one. With a follow-up of... Oops, get back here. With a follow-up of something like this later. Because he can't hold all of the different cutting points here that just serve to give me more and more influence. Um, any question about the game? Um, no, it seemed pretty straightforward. Cool. So the greatest thing uh, here, I think, is one, identifying the points of interest that come up during the game and kind of planning to use them accordingly. For you, I think it was definitely attacking in the direction that will maximize your potential rather than to kill and identifying when we have to make the decision on which way we want to attack. Uh, whereas, let's go back to that L group again, where you wanted to do that. Yeah, here. Like here, for example, where we're probably going to be running our opponent into our potential. But if we had nothing else to profit for this game, we'd absolutely do it. And I guess to be fair, even... Even on this board, it could be doable because I can still make some points in between these. There is some territory that I could still make here. But it's not, I've already got an area set up to do that. And then being able to identify that and then knowing how I can profit because of uh, the stones that are already on the board. But all right, uh, thanks for joining me today. Next week, I'm going to have you going back and picking a nice little volunteer to slaughter. So I wish you luck between then and now, and we'll see how you're doing. Sounds good. I'll see you then. All right. Take care.